Kevin Doody from the Future Housing Task Force back again, 25 kilometres outside of Newcastle. And what we're looking at here with Michael and again Nigel, who we've introduced you to earlier, is one of their earlier rooming houses or boarding houses as we're calling them, next generation. Now this one's interesting because it only has one car park, one car park. Today with 36 rooms, you'd have to provide more like 18 car parks for that that's under the new guidance. That's a pretty big change, isn't it? been a big change by the New South Wales State Government on this uh, product now. Yeah, that's one that you had to learn. And the second one is this, this fascination that they insist that all the bins be undercover, which is, uh, you know, interesting because every problem in your life was once a great idea. And in this particular case, when you put the bins in shelter, that comes with the usual smell that goes with that. So they've had to retrofit, if you like, by putting in various fans and other things. The other interesting thing I've noted here is that this is the first of their kind that is actually managed by a real estate agency, and I is one, so I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I am saying it's a different thing, because with real estate agents, they only get to visit the place either under a problem or every 90 days, compared to your on-site management that we've seen so far. And that does have some inherent problems that we've noticed in this particular building, where it's not to the same high level, if you like, of consistency that the other ones have. So be very, very careful when you make that decision between a management agency with 36 different tenants versus uh, an on-site management system that can be the same price or even less in some instances to do it that way. Other interesting things was that this was originally four buildings, am I correct? Yes. And therefore you had four letterboxes. Yes. And that meant for some very crowded letterboxes. <laughs> it did. Um, it didn't work. Didn't work? Didn't work. So you decided to put in 36 letterboxes? Yep which made a heck of a difference. Uh, so fundamentally, uh, Battle Axed uh, is this one. They've, they haven't bought the house on the front, so it's got a narrow entry point. Uh, who are the tenants? Uh, a lot of university students, and um, we just met a, a computer analysis guy. Um, business analyst. Biz, business analyst. Yeah. Uh, there's divorced dads, but majority, uh, there's a school teacher, majority are university students. We are across the road from the university. So fundamentally, location in this case has, has defined the uh, tenancy mix as to be a slightly younger demographic yeah. than you have in some of your other ones. Yep. I've noticed you mix in the other ones as anywhere from 30 to 75, yep. whereas here I've seen a tendency more to the, um, maybe cutting out more to mid 40s yeah. uh, because of that university thing. You've probably got some nurses here. Yes. Uh, that sort of thing, first responders. Yep. So basically it's there. Uh, noise processes, learning from this one, you've, you've learned to put more noise uh, suppression. systems in, suppression in, yeah. uh, and, and, and so it's a learning process as we said before. So it's an interesting one to see, five years. So in five years we've gone from one car park to 18 car parks. So it's quite a change when you look at those simple things and believe me, car parks take up a lot of space when you're looking at a gross floor area. Yep. And they don't pay any money. <laughs> they don't pay you no money on those. Still, the return on this one's pretty exciting. It is. Very, very good. Yeah. Um, good percentage returns. It is an interest only loan um, and it net profits 20000 a month. So when you look at your interest only loan, I mean some people would balk at this, but let's say this was a $2 million facility. Yes. On interest only, that could cost you about, I don't know, 20, 25,000 a year. Yep. Um, so that's really one month's income. Yep. The other 11 months is yours. Yep. Wow. It's making money. Guys, if you're listening to that, one month you give it to the bank and that's it for the year, the other 11 months is yours. I think we're probably getting the gist of the fact that these financially stack up very, very well. And more importantly, they do a social good for the community where they supply housing for people in need uh, that otherwise wouldn't have it. We just finished talking to Alan at the previous one that we didn't interview. Alan started a new life at the age of 74 where his uh, family unit decided to go where it went. And I might point out that the highest divorce rate in Australia is over 60 at the moment. So it's not uncommon. But for Alan, it was either living with one of his sons, which wouldn't be a good idea for him, he just wanted his own independence, being the dad, or on the street. In this particular case, his comments were, I have won the lotto. So we're talking about a whole raft of people that we've given enjoyment of quality of life to. It's a very satisfying thing. The profitability is just the end result of what we're doing here. Um, and it's not a bad end result because you can't solve problems if it doesn't make you money. And it allows you to build another one too. Exactly. To help and, more people. And that's why we're here today, because we're addressing council a little today, uh, talking about why we would like to do another one, which they are, how would we say, giving us feedback that would be considered negative to some people, uh, which is why 
decided to join them here today and do this little mini doco for you so you get a greater understanding of what's happening in this particular field. So thanks for listening, guys, and we'll catch you at the next one.